places to see Florence is full of art and architecture. Even, one might say, oversaturated. Flowering City made a grandiose contribution to the development of European civilization. Therefore, it is definitely worth a visit to every self-respecting traveler. The sights of Florence will pick up the key to the heart of anyone. There is something to see, capture, and admire here. We offer you a brief excursion to the most amazing historical places of Florence, which are a must-see. Monuments of religious architecture temples and cathedrals, which are the pride of locals and the subject of increased attention of visitors, are in every ancient Italian city. In gentle Florence you can see a grandiose cathedral, an ancient baptistery, a medieval bell tower and many historic churches. Santa Maria del Fiore, Italian Gothic masterpiece The Soul of Florence is its cathedral, or Santa Maria del Fiore. One of the five most impressive cathedrals in the world has graced the city's cathedral square for seven centuries. Its scale and facade of multicolored marble, among which there are a lot of sculptural compositions, are striking. Photo by, Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. The interior of the cathedral is in the Italian Gothic style, with its numerous arches, naves, lancet vaults and pilasters. The best Italian sculptors of the 16th century worked on the marble floor. Returning to the grandiose size of the temple, it should be mentioned that it can accommodate up to 30,000 people. The terracotta dome of the cathedral is a unique construction, you can see it from inside during the excursion. Cost, free of charge. For 18 euros you can visit Brunelleschi's dome, Giotto's Campanile, the crypt of Santa Riparita, the Cathedral Museum and the Baptistery of St. John. Photo by Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. Opening hours of the Cathedral, Sunday, from 1330 to 1645, Monday through Saturday, from 10 to 1630. How to get there, take bus C1 to the studio stop. Baptistery of San Giovanni, Florence's Gate of Heaven with works by Donatello The Baptistery of Florence is the oldest structure in the city, located near the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore and Giotto's Bell Tower. In such a form, in which we can see the temple today, it has remained since the 13th century. Photo by, Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. For centuries it was here that all the natives of Florence were baptized. The eastern door of the baptistery attracts attention most of all. The great Michelangelo called this work by Lorenzo Ghiberti the Gate of Heaven. Unfortunately, only a copy of the door is installed in the baptistery, while the original can be seen in the Cathedral Museum. The dome vault, decorated with fantastic frescoes, also impresses with its splendor. In particular, the depiction of the Last Judgment in its center. Author of the photo, Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. In the Baptistery of San Giovanni you can also see sculptures created by Donatello. Opening hours, from 8.15 to 10.15 and from 11.15 to 19.30. Cost, you have to buy a full ticket for 18 euros to see the place. This ticket also allows you to visit Brunelleschi's Dome, Giotto's Campanile, the Crypt of Santa Riparita, the Cathedral Museum and St. John's Baptistery and is valid for 24 hours after visiting the first attraction. Giotto's Campanile, the famous medieval bell tower The Gothic bell tower at the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore was built in the 14th century by Giotto di Bondone. Hence its name. Giotto's bell tower is known for its beautiful marble inlays and rich sculptural decoration. One of the main Florentine pride. Photo by Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. Opening hours, from 8.15 to 1900 hours. Please note that to climb the tower, you will have to climb 414 steps, there is no elevator. View from Giotto Tower. Photo by, Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. Cost, you need to buy a full ticket for 18 euros to see the place. This ticket also allows you to visit the cathedral, Brunelleschi's dome, the crypt of Santa Riparita, the cathedral museum and the baptistery of St. John and is valid for 24 hours after visiting the first attraction.
popular Florentine museums and galleries strolling the medieval streets of Florence, you will come across many sites created by great masters like Andrea Pisano, Arnolfo di Cambio and many more. In most cases, these will be just copies of works of art, while the originals are kept in museums. It is for these that you should go to the museums of Florence. For example, the marble sculpture David by Michelangelo is on display at the Academy of Fine Arts, and the copy is located in Piazza della Signoria in Florence, at the entrance to the Palazzo Vecchio. Uffizi Gallery, a collection of priceless art one of the richest galleries in the world is located in the center of Florence. The Uffizi is unique when you consider the sheer value of the works of art it houses. Most of the collection dates from the 12th to the 17th century. The Uffizi Gallery is not inferior in attendance even to the Vatican Museums. And this is quite understandable. In its halls you can enjoy the works of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Rubens, Rembrandt, Botticelli, and many other famous masters. The gallery is housed in a huge building that was begun in 1560, designed by the noble architect Giorgio Vasari. Not only the contents, but also the Uffizi's cloister is a precious treasure. Opening hours, daily, except Monday, from 815 to 1850. Cost, 20 euros, in winter 12 euros. There are always huge queues at the gallery, you can book a ticket in advance on the official website. San Marco Monastery Museum, the center of religious creativity in Florence The former Dominican Monastery of San Marco was enlarged and has been a national museum since the 19th century. It is a deeply religious place with its own history and amazing atmosphere. Famous religious figures such as Savonarola and Fra Angelico dedicated their lives to their faith here. A special place in the Monastery Museum is given to the work of Fra Beato Angelico. His frescoes decorate the monastery from the inside. All the works of the Master, dedicated to the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, and the Saints, were created within the walls of this monastery and never left it. Photo Source, WorldTravelServer.com Among the most famous works are the Annunciation of 1438, Gerlandeo's Fresco of the Last Supper, the Crucifixion, and the Altarpiece Madonna with Saints. Another value of San Marco is the Arcade of San Antonio, created in the 15th century. In the monastery you can visit the first public library of the Renaissance and see a rare collection of manuscripts. Opening hours, Monday to Friday from 8.30 to 13.50, on weekends until 16.50. Cost, 4 euros. How to get there, take one of the buses number 6, 14, 23, 31. 32 to the Museo de San Marco stop. Luxurious palaces are an ornament of the capital of Tuscany. There are a great number of them here. And each one can be admired for a long time, savoring every detail of luxurious interiors and unique architectural solutions. Medieval Palazzo Vecchio in Piazza della Signoria the old Florentine palace, erected in 1299-1314, is located in Piazza della Signoria. The Palazzo della Signoria, as it used to be called, is a true architectural gem. What is worth only its inner courtyards, the Hall of 500 decorated with frescoes of the 16th century, the Cloakroom, and the Signoria Chapel. Behind all these names lies a huge amount of valuable historical heritage. The luxury of local interiors is legendary. Photo source, oddviser.com the frescoes of Palazzo Vecchio in the Hall of the Elements are amazing, and in the cloakroom you can see a huge ancient globe and 53 geographical maps created in the 16th century. The Satena Terrace offers mind-blowing views of the historic part of Florence. Opening hours, Friday through Wednesday from 9 to 1900 hours, Thursdays until 1400 hours. Cost, a full ticket to the museum costs 10 euros, with a discounted price of 8 euros. How to get there, Piazza della Signoria is located in the center of Florence. The nearest public transportation stop is Galleria degli Uffizi, Route C1. Palazzo Pitti, an example of ancient architecture and a museum complex another, no less grandiose, the richest of Florence's palaces. 
first of all it impresses with its incredible power, and afterwards with its contents. The building of the Palazzo is an outstanding monument of architecture. The Palazzo, named after the banker Luca Pitti who began its construction, served as the residence of the Dukes of Tuscany, the Medici family, the Habsburgs of Lorraine and Italian kings. The scale of Palazzo Pitti is astonishing. Each of the three floors reaches 10 meters in height. You have to give credit to the architects, considering that the construction was started in 1458. Author of the photo, Dear Avi. Today, the palace building houses a museum complex, which includes the Palatine Gallery, the Silver Museum, the Gallery of Modern Art, the Porcelain Museum, the Carriage Museum and the Costume Gallery. Photo Source, LifeGlobe.net Works of art of great masters, amazing frescoes, luxury items of former epochs and other evidence of the aristocracy's power shock the guests of Palazzo Pitti with their abundance. Opening hours, daily, except Mondays, from 8.15 to 18.50. It will take several days to tour the entire complex. Cost, a ticket costs between 5 euros and 38 euros, depending on the museum selected. Valid for three days. Includes a visit to the Babalai Gardens adjacent to the palace. How to get there, take the C3 or C4 bus to the pity stop. Medici Riccardi, Renaissance Palazzo A striking example of early Renaissance architecture is the Medici Palace, built in 1460. It attracts with its austere, restrained, but very elegant three-tiered facade. The most famous place of the palace is the Chapel of the Magi from 1459. It is two small rooms, in one of which there is an altar. The chapel is decorated with a carved wooden ceiling with gilded frescoes and a marble floor. Photo source, ClassicTic.com Today, the Palazzo Medici Riccardi houses the prefecture of the city. Some rooms are open to the public. Opening hours, daily, except Wednesday, from 9 to 1900 hours. Cost, 10 euros. How to get there, take one of the buses 14, 23, C1 to the Via de Pucci stop. Palazzo Strazzi, Renaissance architectural monument in the center of Florence there is an austere three-story palace. It is Palazzo Strazzi, built in 1539 for the representatives of the family of the same name. The palace can not boast of rich decoration, its advantage is in its size. It is a rectangular building with a graceful courtyard decorated with antique columns. Today Strazi is a monument of Renaissance architecture, an exhibition hall and a center for all kinds of cultural events. The premises are divided into three zones. The piano novel is where interesting events take place, the second floor houses the Strazi Center for Contemporary Art, and the courtyard is home to cafes, snack bars, and souvenir shops. Opening hours, daily, except Monday, from 10 to 20 hundred hours. On Thursday until 23 hundred hours. Cost, a full ticket costs 12 euros, discounted tickets cost 9.50 and 4 euros. How to get there, by public transportation to the stop Staccione di Santa Maria Novella, Piazza del Duomo, via Tornabuni, Piazza della Repubblica. Many of the buildings that have survived in the city are particularly valuable for their venerable age. Among them there are some that seem to be completely timeless. To pass by them, of course, is inexcusable. Church of San Lorenzo, a heritage of religious architecture or Basilica of St. Lawrence is one of the largest ancient churches in Florence. It was first built in the 4th century, while the modern version dates back to the 15th century. The church is full of works of religious art. Among the main treasures are two pulpits and the sacristy by Donatello, the sarcophagus of Pietro and Giovanni de' Medici by Viracchio, and the Medici tombstones decorated by Michelangelo. In San Lorenzo rest members of the Medici families. The appearance of the church is unsightly, but once inside, the first impression is reversed. It is definitely worth seeing the Chapel of the Princes and visiting the Laurentian Library. Opening hours, daily, except Sunday, from 10 to 17.30.
cost, 6 euros. On Sundays you can attend mass for free. How to get there, take bus number C1 to the stop Piazza di San Lorenzo. Porta Romana, the entrance to medieval Florence part of the ancient Florentine fortress wall. From this gate, the road leading to Rome and Siena once began. They were built in the 13th century. It is a living witness of medieval Florence, which can be confirmed by a marble plaque with inscriptions in Latin dating back to 1327. The wooden doors of the gate, with large old locks, have also been preserved. Photo source, tourism.com How to get there, the Roman gate is located between Roman Street and Via Siraglio. Behind them, the Babali Gardens begin. Ponte Vecchio, historical bridge and market stall built in 1345, the Ponte Vecchio has preserved its original appearance until modern times. In the Middle Ages, butcher shops were opened here, and since then the bridge has been known as the most foul-smelling place in Florence. Now it is a famous landmark, where even today there is a brisk trade, but already jewelry, for which it is nicknamed Golden. How to get there, the old Vecchio Bridge is located at the narrowest point of the Arno River, near the Uffizi Gallery. A traditional cup of coffee at the ancient Rivoire if one were to emphasize historical sites while traveling in Florence, one should not deny oneself the pleasure to relax and refresh oneself in the oldest and most popular cafe in the historic part of the city. Photo source, joker-way.com Rivoire was founded in 1872. And since then it has remained a very popular place among nobles and high-ranking officials. The establishment produces its own excellent chocolate. How to get there, Café Rivoire is located in Piazza della Signoria, near the famous Uffizi Gallery. What else is worth visiting in Florence to complete your trip around Florence you can visit several more picturesque places, which any experienced tourist will advise you to walk around. Piazza della Signoria and Neptune the most photographed place in Florence is, of course, Piazza della Signoria. The ancient square, which even saw the fires of the Holy Inquisition, is nowadays a real museum of historical heritage. It is dotted with many valuable sculptures, the history and originality of which can be talked about endlessly. In the very center is the famous Neptune's Fountain. The white marble figure of the sea god is nicknamed Biancone by the Florentines, which means white giant. The same David, copy. Author of the further on is even more interesting. Right on the course of the equestrian monument to Cosimo I. Medici, made in 1594, Judith with the head of Holofernes, created by Donatello, a lion with a shield Marzico, a copy of the famous David Michelangelo, Hercules defeating Caucus by Baccio Bandinelli and others. All highly artistic masterpieces decorating the square have no analogues in the world. The Piazza della Signoria is also home to the Palazzo Signoria, better known as the Palazzo Vecchio. Here you can also see the Loggia Lanzi, built in 1376-1382 for the meetings of the Florentine Republic. Author of the photo, Alexandra Safranov I go to World Photo Group. How to get there, Piazza della Signoria is located in the very center of Florence. The nearest public transportation stop is Condotta, Route C2. Babali Gardens at Palazzo Pitti, a green corner of the city to take a break from touring Florence's noble palaces, you can diversify your trip with a stroll through the famous Babali Gardens. A unique park with centuries-old trees, old sculptures and fountains, spreads behind the Pitti Palace. The first mention of the gardens dates back to the 16th century. They were opened to the public in 1766. Photo source, dturista.com Here were held lavish receptions, theatrical performances, and for the first time in Italy, opera was demonstrated. Here, in the shade of winding alleys, among the echoes of centuries, today everyone can take a stroll. Opening hours, daily, except for the first and last Monday of the month, from 8.15. Closing times vary depending on the month. Cost, a full ticket costs 10 euros, with a discounted price of 5 euros. 
a comprehensive ticket with a tour of Pity Palace costs 38 euros. Selling food and drinks in the garden is prohibited, so it is better to stock up on lunch beforehand. How to get there, take one of the 11 buses to the Calzaramana stop. Where to stay if you plan to stretch your pleasure and stay in Florence for a few days, you should carefully choose your accommodation. We advise you to choose a hotel according to its proximity to the desired attractions, the ratio of the cost of accommodation to the quality of services provided, the availability of parking and so on. The choice of hotels in Florence is quite diverse, in the area of the train station is interesting Hotel Santa Maria Novella. In the heart of the old town are the Hotel 7 Florence B&B, Villa in Florence Area V, Hotel Palazzo Dal Borgo, Florence Station Rooms and others. In the Santa Maria Novella neighborhood are the Grand Hotel Baglioni and Hotel El Orologio. In the Piazza Onesanti neighborhood there is the fashionable The Weston Excelsior. In the blocks around the Duomo are Hotel Pierre and FH Hotel Calzaoli, Hotel Duomo Firenze, Grand Duomo Charming Accommodation, Tourist House Ricci and others. Near Piazza Signoria you can stay at Relay Piazza Signoria, Palazzo Ugicinai Apartments.